Hi, this is Mike Duncan with Salant Consulting. Today we want to look at Amazon Web Services and getting creative when we take a look at infrastructure as a service and setting up a FileMaker server in the cloud and some of the different options that we have available to us. Uh, what we're going to try today is it's a follow-up to our quick start guide setting up a FileMaker server in the cloud. What I've done now is I've, I've made an image of that. We're going to have two FileMaker servers both of those instances are going to host a file that connect to a MySQL server on the back end. So the data is going to be the same across both databases. Then we're going to create a load balancer. And so all this is going to happen inside what's called a virtual private cloud. That means this is kind of on its own uh, local network as far as these servers are concerned. And those are exposed through the load balancer one endpoint to us out here outside the cloud. So using FileMaker Pro, we're able to connect to the load balancer. The load balancer is going to determine the health of our servers and route us to the healthiest one. No matter which one of those servers we get connected to, both of those are going to connect back to our single data source. Now this isn't like a best practice by any means, but this is just more of a technology demo to show you what's possible. So let's take a look at our Amazon Web Services Management Console. So this is where we created the load balancer and this gives us a single endpoint. So we can see here and we've got it configured with our two EC2 instances. Both of these are running FileMaker server um, and we've set up a listener on port 5003 because that's what FileMaker comes into. So if also if, if we wanted to set up SSL we could set that up here instead of on each of our servers. So here's just to give you a look at the both the instances that we have running. We kind of get an idea of their health based on CPU utilization network so that's the criteria for which server we're going to get routed to when we connect to this thing and just to give you an idea here's an instance of MySQL running in the cloud too this is running as what they call RDS remote database service this is their database as a service so we can take a look at some of the different options here and these are, are pretty cost effective just for our development testing we've chosen the MySQL. Amazon also offers this Aurora which is a higher performance MySQL compatible and this works just like MySQL and then they also offer Oracle and SQL Server. So these don't require their own operating system to run. You don't have to set them up as an EC2 instance. You just create the database instance and you can connect to it. So now let's take a look at both of our servers. I'm logged in via remote desktop you can see here's uh, server 1 and here's server 2. Both of them have the file hosted, the exact same file. Both of these files are connected via ODBC to our MySQL instance. So I'm going to go ahead and log out of both of these. But I just wanted to show you that those are both up and running. Now if we go back and look at our instances, you can see that each of them have their own IP address. But we don't connect via the IP address. We connect via our endpoint, our DNS name from our load balancer. And our load balancer lists both the instances and it lists them both as in service. So finally what we want to do is open up FileMaker Pro, open remote, go to our load balancer, it's showing us a database available. We're going to log in and we'll be able to tell that, all right, I got connected to server one. And here's the table with the MySQL data. So now we're going to do something interesting. I can see that I'm connected to the first instance of my server running. I'm going to go ahead and create a new record. Give it a little data. Just commit the record. We see how it's created. Now we can see that both my instances are connected to my load balancer and both are listed as in service. I'm connected to the first one, so we're going to remove the first one from the load balancer. Yep, remove. And then you can kind of watch here and see what happens in back in FileMaker. This first instance has been removed from the load balancer and what's going to happen is without us doing anything, without us having to log in again, our traffic is going to get routed from the instance that's no longer part of that to the instance that is still running. There we go, it just switched over. Now I'm on server 2 automatically. Um, all the records are still there. There's my record that I entered from the other server. So this is just a, uh, an example to give you some ideas and start thinking about infrastructure as a service. One of the next steps could be doing this programmatically. So as your, as your load increases over time, 
you could spin up uh, new servers automatically. I've taken an image of one server. You could use that image to programmatically like spin up new servers and add them to your load balancer. So as your load increases, say during the middle of the day, that load gets distributed across servers and then to save on costs at night as those get inactive, those get shut down. So hopefully this gives you some idea of what's possible and just gets you to start thinking about infrastructure as a service. Thanks a lot. This is Mike Duncan with Salai Consulting.